are you guys doing? We're banging this barrel. Yeah, I can see that. Why? Because we think we can crush it. With a bat? Yeah. But why? Well, if one can gives you five cents, imagine how much this thing will give you. Hi, I'm Nate Macon, and I'm the physics teacher here at Skyview High School. This is my classroom. Today, we're going to talk about equilibrium. Sounds fascinating, right? Let me, uh, let me put it another way. Today, we're going to crush a giant metal barrel. But to do that, we need to know about equilibrium. So what's the definition of equilibrium? By definition, equilibrium is when opposing forces are balanced, kind of like this teeter-totter. Right here, we have two unequal-sized masses. Both are experiencing gravity. But the teeter-totter is balanced, which means that all the forces that act on this system at this balance point must all cancel out. So to demonstrate this concept of equilibrium, I have two of my physics students here, Will and Samir, who are going to help demonstrate how to use this piece of equipment called a bell jar. Oh, the bell jar. I read that in English class. Oh, um, different bell jar, dude. Well, I hope this one ends better than the book. Me too. Okay, so here is the bell jar. And what we have here is a jar with a balloon taped to the inside. And right here is a vacuum system. This nozzle here sucks air from inside of the bell jar into the system. All right, so as you pull air out from inside the bell jar, the balloon and the bell jar will want to maintain equilibrium. The pressure inside the balloon right now is equal to the pressure outside of it, and that's why it's not expanding or contracting. It's at the same volume. And so as you pull air from inside the bell jar out, you will see the balloon expand to try to maintain an equal pressure. Okay, so let's turn it on and see what happens. Okay, right now air is being sucked out from inside the bell jar, and as we see the balloon is expanding. Inside the balloon, there's a higher air pressure than outside, and this higher air pressure causes air from inside the balloon to travel outward, making the balloon expand. Yeah. So, gas is actually composed of a bunch of molecules that bounce around off of everything. And so, as you pull molecules from inside the bell jar out, there are less molecules hitting the outside, of outside the balloon. And inside the balloon, there are also molecules hitting the inside walls of the balloon which makes the balloon want to expand to compensate for that so there's more surface area that the molecules have to hit on the inside of the balloon. It's an equilibrium! <laughs> equilibrium! <laughs> so now let's see what happens when we, take air, when we put air back into the bell jar. Right. What should happen is that the balloon should contract because air outside of the balloon is higher than the air inside the balloon. Yeah, so the pressure will want to equalize again. So now air is being brought back into the bell jar, and we see that the balloon is contracting and going back to its original size. Now the balloon and the air outside, the air inside the balloon and the air outside the balloon are in perfect equilibrium. Pretty cool. So let's get back to that giant can you guys wanted to crush. Yes, please. So to explain how we're going to crush the large can, we're going to use this little can. Now what you're going to need is a source of heat. Remember kids, you can do this at home, but you probably want to do it with your parents around. So let's turn it on and see what happens. So while our hot plate's heating up, we're going to put a little bit of water in the bottom of this can. So you can see the steam coming out of the top of the can, that means this thing's ready. You want to get some tongs so you don't burn your hand, and then you flip it over, put it in the water, Kabam. And you get a crushed can. So why don't you guys give it a try? Fill this with a little bit of water. And then place it on the burner. 
Okay, that's pretty hot. And what's happening is that the water is becoming water vapor, and this water vapor is pushing molecules inside the can, outside through the mouth. Cool. Yeah. So, Will, why don't we flip that over and put it into the, into the water bath there? Okay. Be sure to be very careful about using those tongs. Don't burn yourself. Okay, I'll be very careful. As we heated up the can, air molecules are escaping. And as we cool it down, that means that air molecules are trying to get back in. It's just like what happened with the bell jar. So now that we know about how to crush these little cans, are you guys ready to crush that big one? I want nothing more than to crush that barrel as soon as humanly possible. Well, that's great. But first, here's today's famous scientist. Today's famous scientist is Blaise Pascal. Born in 1623 in France, Pascal made the lives of accountants, economists, scientists, and even weathermen a whole lot easier. Pascal was a child prodigy, and at the age of 16, he sent a new mathematical theory to René Descartes. At the ripe old age of 18, Pascal invented one of the first mechanical calculators to help out his dad, who was a taxman under the notorious Cardinal Richelieu. Pascal's casual ideas about gambling introduced the world to the probability theory which predicts the odds of whether or not something will happen. But with apologies to Freddie Mercury, Pascal's biggest work came under pressure. Aristotle said that nature abhors a vacuum, or in plain English, that vacuums cannot exist. But with a little help from his brother-in-law, Florin, Pascal used Mercury, no, not that Mercury, well, that's the one to prove Aristotle wrong. Florin put glass tubes upside down in the mercury, creating simple barometers, and measured the mercury rising in the tubes. He then hiked up a volcano. This experiment showed that the empty space was a vacuum filled with nothing, unlike Aristotle, who was totally full of it. Today, a bunch of scientific principles are named after Pascal. So are units we use to measure pressure, and even a computer programming language. And remember that probability theory? Well, it was developed by others and is extremely important to the world's economy. So even though Pascal had health problems his whole life and died at age 39, his legacy will live on forever. So what's going to happen is we're going to put a small amount of water here in the bottom of the barrel and we're going to place the barrel on top of the burner. Now what we're going to do when we turn the burner on is we're going to create a whole bunch of water vapor in the barrel. And what's going to happen, much like with the smaller coke can, is we're going to have all of the air molecules that are in this barrel escape through the top hole right here. We're going to take this can and we're going to cool it rapidly which means all the air that's gonna, that got pushed out is gonna wanna get back in. And what's gonna happen is it can't all get back in all at once on the top of this barrel. And so since that can't happen, we have non-equilibrium. And so what's gonna happen is the air pressure due to the planet Earth is going to collapse the can. All right, guys, let's put the can on the burner. Just a little bit. There we go. There we go. There we go. Now we're cooking. It's boiling. What we're going to do is we're going to place the cap on top. Right here you're seeing all sorts of air and water vapor escaping the hole. The barrel's warm, so we're going to put the cap on, we're going to cut off the flame, and then we're going to hit it with the hose. Rapidly cooling it, and then hopefully that creates non-equilibrium and crushes the barrel.
I heard it. Is that it? And rewind. And play. Let's try that one more time. So you can see right here, this is a steel can. You can see where the sides buckled in. And the problem was is that we created an unequal pressure system. We had a very low pressure system on the inside as the can cooled versus a high pressure system on the outside with the atmosphere of the earth. And so we have all this pressure outside and not enough pressure inside and so it monk, crushes the can. So here's the point. Knowing about forces and equilibrium may not be all that entertaining, even though crushing cans is pretty cool. But if we didn't know about this stuff like equilibrium, we wouldn't have submarines, we wouldn't have spaceships, we wouldn't be able to explore places that we wouldn't normally be able to go. We wouldn't have tools. And if we wouldn't have those tools, well, we wouldn't know a whole lot about the world around us. And that's the point. Now it's time for the old science mailbag. Andrew writes, Mr. Macon, last episode you handed out a trophy named after Chattels the Monkey. Who is that? Andrew, thanks for the email. Chattels the Monkey is the mascot of this show and the SMT program here at Skyview. He's appeared in every episode of this show and was the star of our first episode when we shot him with an air cannon. In fact, this is the first episode in which he doesn't make a major appearance. Oh wait. If you have a question, email me. It's scienceshow at vanesty.org.